Welcome to Max ECU Training Part 11. This video we're going to be taking a look at how to properly program cam and crank sensor information and trigger patterns using our MTune software. We're going to be covering the basics of what the sensor types we're going to be working with and then how to determine how to properly program either a falling or rising edge within our software. Also figuring out how to go and determine what the trigger pattern of the engine is going to be that we're working with if we're unsure. We have an oscilloscope feature built into the MTune software that's going to allow us to figure out what our pattern is going to be and what sensor type we're going to be working with, as well as programming a lot of other key details in order to make sure things are done correctly. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at setting up our cam and crank sensor programming details into our MTune software, so our Max ECU understands exactly what's going on with our engine under its control. So where to fire the fuel injectors, where to fire the spark plugs to initiate our spark, um, even something like variable cam is all based on engine position and timing. We have to make sure we have our cam and crank patterns and sensor types programmed properly so the Max accepts the signals and accepts the pattern types and it knows exactly what to do with that processed information. Without programming this right, the engine will never run or never run properly at all. So this is probably the most fundamental thing that we have to make sure is first accounted for when we're trying to get the engine fired off and running. Now at this point, we've talked about our basic sensor inputs and our advanced sensor inputs. Those could all be set up right and not have our cam and crank, crank patterns uh, configured right and our engine will never run. So this is again, probably the most important thing followed by then those basic sensor inputs that we covered in a previous video. What I wanna do right now is actually jump in and take a look at the section we're gonna be programming and talking about our various sensor types we'll be dealing with for cam and crank sensors and patterns. Those are gonna be the two things that are almost an endless possibility between all kinds of different engines. So different manufacturers of different engines, Honda, Toyota, BMW, they'll all have different patterns and different sensor types will produce different signals and patterns coming back into the max. If we don't have that accounted for, again, it'll never fire up and run. We're gonna be taking a look at a lot of little details and configuration settings here in this video so you can get a start and a basis for programming your cam and crank sensor types. Now, let's go here into our start navigation menu here on the side. And what we're gonna do is go our, work our way down here under inputs. And then we have our section here, trigger home inputs. Now in here, we find that we have our trigger input and home input. When we're talking about a trigger, this refers to the crank sensor itself, and that's known as our trigger. The home is what's known as our cam sink, or what's found on typically the camshaft, that'll give us the position of our cam movement, and it'll allow us to track where the engine's at within the auto cycle. Now, we can run an engine just on a trigger input, or we can run an engine on trigger and home together. The ideal configuration is having both a trigger input and a home input. By having both of these together, we can run a sequential style fuel injection, and we're also able to run a direct fire sequential ignition type of system. That means that we can fire the coil and the injector timed within the engine's position, um, so let's say number one cylinder position, we can time everything precisely so that we can deliver the fuel and spark exactly how we like. Now, if we're lacking a home input, let's say the engine's not fitted with it and we're just dealing with the trigger, we're gonna be limited to way spark type of ignition where we can't fire all the coils in a sequential uh, order to the firing order of the engine and we're gonna find the injection event can't be timed to the actual valve timing where the valve would be opening and closing on the intake valve to get the fuel into the engine as efficiently as possible. So the ideal configuration for any engine we're working with would be having both a trigger and a home together. Most modern engines will have this. Um, we'll find that a lot of the older engines um, will, be, will be sometimes having just a trigger input, but we wanna see that both of these are used together so we can take advantage of all the advanced programming functionalities and capabilities within our Max ECU. So now that we understand the triggers relating to the crank sensor position and the home relates to the signal taken off the cam sensor position, we now need to understand what is going on with the actual patterns coming from the sensor readings and the sensor types themselves. Because there's gonna be two different sensor types and there's an endless amount of actual patterns that can be produced. So coming up on screen, just to illustrate this and talk about our sensor types first, we're gonna find that this graphical illustration shows a Hall effect style sensor and a VR or magnetic type sensor. It's the difference 
of two different sensors that we may be working with. Now, if you're unsure if the engine is going to be having a Hall effect or a VR style signal, you can look at the actual wiring on the sensor itself. Typically, we'll find a Hall effect sensor will have three wires, and that's going to have a power, a ground, and a signal. And we'll find that the actual sensor itself has an internal circuitry that requires a power and a ground source. And any time, as we look at this picture here, it's going to have a wheel with teeth on it. Every time a tooth passes over that signal, it'll reduce an output that's known as a square wave output. We can actually see that in that, uh, that signal output that's generated here on our graphical plot. So we can see that's having kind of a sawtooth pattern. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.